uh, and kick off with a, a game against the, uh, the the bot here. And then here are my master games. So we have uh, three different ones. One of them is played uh, back all the way in uh, in the 1890s. So pretty far back. We still look at it today because it's just such an awesome game. Uh, a bit about me. I've been playing chess for um, for like 15 years. I've been teaching it for 10. I just absolutely love doing it. Um, and I'm I'm rated within the top 100 in the in the state. I'm rated 19, like 20. I play actively and, and study myself a lot and just really, really enjoy, enjoy the game. Uh, I can also play blindfold chess too. So um, just super passionate about this stuff. Okay, going to start out with this this game against the bot, and as I play through it, I'm just going to kind of talk out my uh, my strategies too, and so we'll just do this sort of quickly. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see here. E4 opening. Any, any any votes for what we should do? E5, E6 is kind of my bread and butter. I could mix it up and do something different. Ooh, lots of votes. Great participation here. Okay, mainly for E5. Let's do it. We're going to go e5 here. Let's see what happens. Knight to c3. You know, this one's okay. I wonder if he's going to do the the, the uh, Vienna or not. Let's go here. I noticed that this gets played a lot um, early on by players. And unless you plan on going f4 right after that, um, I don't really think it's a great bet because sometimes you want to move like your c pawn. Also, it can be nice to move this knight out first, uh, making an attack here and then also getting ready to castle. g3, kind of a strange move doing like a fianchetto. Let's see here, we could play uh, d5 right away. What I should do too is go like this, and then that way I can kind of see you guys in the chat a little bit. Like this. Um, we'll just we'll just kind of keep it ho-hum basic for right now, and just continue to bring out our pieces with, uh, with like knight to c6, or let's go here, bishop to c5. After there, let's just get castled, just following opening principles. And then also, while I look at this too, um, if you haven't seen it before, um, go and have a look at uh, those those PDFs. And then you can save it on your computer too, and um, you know, hopefully that'll help you out with your, your puzzle solving ventures. Let's go C6, I'm gonna get ready to control the center right here. And just a very even position. And again, I know I said it before. I'm just, I'm just super excited to look at the, those master games with you guys in a second. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Bishop out like this. He's gonna do fianchetto on both sides. Still pretty even position. Now I may go like queen up and attack right here. Expecting this move. King's Indian. Mm, this is kind of like a King's Indian attack. Yeah. Um, it's called the King's Indian defense when you do it as, as black for whatever reason. And then when you do this kind of thing as, as white, it's, um, King's Indian attack, I guess. Uh, it's not as, nearly as popular as the as King's Indian defense. I like my position here. Got great control over the center here. Um, he's attacking this, this bishop. This is a definite threat. Um, you don't want to play something like, uh, like queen to e7 here. It's not really fitting just to, to guard it. Cause if we swap these off, that's going to be a, a bad exchange. So then it's just a matter of where we retreat it to. Let's just go here. Bishop, uh, if we go b6, we could also be taken. This is a super bizarre move. Uh, queen to b1. There's plenty of advantages to playing the, the bot, but sometimes you get these like weird moves that just aren't going to come up against a human player. So that's the downside of it. But um, it's still really nice because it moves instantly and gives you a nice like, study platform for, for learning. Okay, d4. Let's just push it. Um, I like that this pawn can't easily be ejected. A little worried about c4 there. Not as worried about the knight coming back. Um, it's nice that this pawn is so well anchored here because he can't really go f3 without making this square really weak. Uh, let's go out here. I'm expecting king here. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we win a pawn now. Okay, so this is his first big mistake. Yeah, bot move, exactly. And he's going after my bishop. I don't like it. I'm going to retreat this guy back here. Now he's attacking right over here. He's making a threat. So going over to uh, my system of, of active moves here. If you haven't heard of this before, hopefully this is just going to blow your mind here and this will like help you out just a ton with uh, solving puzzles and everything. If you haven't heard it before, that's probably a little bit overwhelming. And just try to think about it in terms of those three highlighted words, checks, captures, and, and threats. If you have, then you can sort of expand your knowledge of it a little bit by breaking it down as, as shown here. And again, that's, that's on the uh, PDF that I sent you guys. 
All right, Rook's attacked. This move seems pretty obvious. We'll just go right here. Takes, takes right here. And so now I can almost play this sacrifice here, but he's got two defenders. I got two attackers, so it's not quite enough to pull it off. What do you guys think I should play here? E3, yep, yep. Ooh, knight g4 too. Yeah, I like knight g4. I don't know how he's going to defend that. Let's do it. Knight g4. Okay, so right there we have uh, mate in two here. Who sees it? I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds. You guys are nailing it. Yep. Good to hear. Good to hear. Impressive stuff. Let me also scan. Um, so we got a, f a few different comments on the ratings. Looks like a little bit higher than average for today. That's great to hear. I'm guessing that's, oh, great. And a lot of you guys answered this. Looks like an average of about like 1400, which is, which is great. Cool. I'll try to cater my questions there. Um, also, I've learned that when I go over these these master games, um, you guys you know ask great questions, and some of them are like tougher to answer. And so I've got on a, a separate window here an analysis board, so I can use the the computer engine and pre pretend like I'm just uh, omnipotent and, and know all these things instantly. Um, okay, so these these games here are taken from this this book, um, the Art of Attack, and it's just um, just a really really um, great great book. And um, the, the first chapter is about the uh, you know, attack on the king that's lo lost the right to, to castle. This first one, let's see what this one is. So we've got um, uh, uh, Potemkin against Alakine. Anybody heard of Alakine before? Why for yes, legend, yes, absolutely. All right, let's navigate over to this one here. This is our game. And we're going to spin this around. So Black's going to win this game. And like I said, my, my plan is to just do master games the uh, the, the whole time. whole time. I, oftentimes, too, sometimes I like to um, ask my audience what uh, theme they're the most interested in. But this time around, I just kind of chose for you guys. And the upside is I can be a little more prepared. So um, I'm excited to show you guys this. Okay, game starts out. E4, C5, pawn to G3. Um, and then we're gonna go like this. Um, what opening is this called? Alakine's gun, yep. Dragon, yep, nice. You guys are sharp. Nice ones, yep. So dragon, and um, it's kind of lame, but the reason they call it a dragon is because you normally put your, your pawn right here, and then you have what looks kind of like a dragon. I don't know, <laughs> that's, that's the idea. So after right there, then we're going to just continue developing. It's going to go C3, kind of doing a, a, an idea that um, I showed you earlier in that bot game where you move this pawn out and then kind of strengthen the uh, this this one here. Yeah, Accelerated Dragon. Exactly. Nice. How is it different than the Accelerated? Um, so with, with the uh, Accelerated, you just go right here and then right here right away. Um, the non-Accelerated way to do it is where you play D6. The, the big difference is the D pawn. So Black's created the possibility of playing d5 in, in one move. Good questions, good questions. All right, knight to a3. What do we think about this move? Brilliant, interesting, or bad? Strange, I'm going to substitute that for bad. Knight in the rim is dim. Seems reasonable. One vote for good. Great participation today. Great attendance, too. We got 25. That's awesome to see. C3 is impossible. Yeah, I can't go to C3 uh, here because the, the pawn's been, been blocking that square. So the uh, the author does give this move a, a, a question mark um, and doesn't give too much explanation. So we can maybe just speculate why this is sort of bad. Um, it seems like more important would be to just castle and then play d4 and then just simply move the knight to like d2. Or if the pawn gets captured, then it can come into to c3. And so these little mistakes can really add up. Um, interesting they gave it a full question mark. He didn't give it um, like a dubious. So I don't know if that's too harsh or not. I'm kind of curious to see if that's uh, 
what the bot is going to say on my my other screen here. Um, the bot calls it this one an inaccuracy. Eh, that's more than an inaccuracy. So the the computer evaluates this move um, to be equivalent to like a pawn and a half. Wow. So white is supposed to be ahead right now by uh, point seven if they go d4. But after playing this move, they're behind by uh, 0.7. So this makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Um, Knight in the Rim is dim. Yep, this is kind of a good way to put it right here. So, um, like I said, plenty of action in all these different games. Um, there's going to be lots of excitement here. So after this, um, now we're going to go D5. And this is going to be the, the point of that accelerated dragon. Is that sometimes you can, you can play this in one go. So Black's kind of getting his way here. Takes, Knight takes. Now the knight comes into c2. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. This game is awesome. There's like this queen sacrifice in a second. Okay, so then now d4. And um, what do we make of this? What should we play here? It's well guarded. Should we take? Should we defend it? One vote for take. Yep. So um, what we're what we're doing here, since the uh, pawn is threatened to be captured, um, we're just we're just responding to this in the most active way and just sort of liquidating that that problem really fast, and then we can just move on to our next plan. Of course, we're not going to follow up by by taking right here. We just want to um, you know sw you know get rid of that problem really quick, and then make use of the fact that this king is not yet castled. So we can go bishop now to, to g4, and this slight lead in development is really kind of adding up here pretty quickly. Um, with, without the king being castled, this turns out to be um, sort of a difficult move now for, uh, for white to, to meet. Um, let's see here, can he, can he castle in this position? He plays f3. What do we think of this move? If we, if we take, that gives a good square for the white knight. Yeah, good point here too. So like... I would be kind of worried about this potentially, like if the knight comes right here, but I think this is going to be all right because we can probably play e5, and so I think that's going to be all right. I do feel like this might have been better though. For the sake of momentum, I'm going to keep going here, but that was a valid concern for sure that we just allow a knight, a, a semi-outpost. It's not a full outpost since we could kick it away with e5. Yeah, f3 is sort of weakening, yeah. And so white kind of misjudged how, how weakening this was going to be, essentially. So he went and played right here, and then now we're going to just retreat the bishop. And then um, now, after this, we're threatening to go takes, and then all of a sudden this once really well-defended pawn is now going to be stripped down to just two defenders, or one actually, just going to be this remaining knight. Because if, if they make like a dummy move here, we can go takes, takes, and now takes right here. Because we had two attackers, only had one defender, and so now we're up that pawn. So Black's all of a sudden got quite a bit of initiative going here. So after right here, the, uh, the knight's going to go into, uh, into e3. And so after this, um, what should we do now? So this is, this is certainly the most uh, advanced question I've asked you guys so far. Looking for like sort of a, a a two or three move plan here. Queen a five was mentioned. Mm -hmm. So if you go queen to a five, what's your plan after bishop to d two? Yeah, if we if we take the uh, the the knight, we can do that. But then bishop takes back, and then we don't really seem to have uh, much of a, a follower here. E3 to have three attackers on D4. Mm -hmm. But then he's also going to have three defenders. I meant after queen to, to A5 check, bishop D2. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. Um, so, let's see here. Um, after, after here check... The king is act so here's kind of a, a, a twist to this. The king is going to go to f2. They're not even going to play this move. What's going on here? Well, like you said, it's going to be that that knight to uh, to e3 move. 
let's kind of see how that shakes out. So we're, we are going to play right here, queen to a5 check, and then they're not going to block this way. Um, if they do, if they if they block like this, then we can go takes. We're up three. Now we're negative six, um, and now we're we're up three. And then after this, um, then I suppose like takes right here zero, and then we're up three. So after that little scuffle there, we do end up ahead on material. So due to that, the uh, most natural move here for for white is just uh, not doable. And so this is an excellent way to to strike before um, the enemy has like fully gotten developed. That's usually the best time to strike. So Alakan does play this move here. Queen to a5 check. Uh, King walks up over here to, to, to f2. And so now what do we do? How do we keep this attack going? We can't play like here because then we lose this, this nice little bishop. Unless we have a strong point to do so. So this is getting tougher. We had some warm-up questions, now these are getting tougher. Try, try to guess what you think um, the, the objectively best next three moves are. So black moves, white moves, black moves. Try, try to guess what, what those three are. Looking for a three move plan. Queen b6 is move one. If you go here, what's white gonna do and then what are you gonna do? The uh, tournament I was telling you guys about, it was g60 and so each player had an hour on their clock and so for some of the moves I thought for like eight minutes, you know? It can be it can be tough and it can take quite a bit of time to figure this stuff out. And this isn't that hard. There's there's gonna be some tougher questions here later for sure. We have a beautiful checkmate coming up, by the way. Uh knight to, to b4. Make sure you annotate which one too, the C one or the, the uh the D knight. I'm gonna guess he meant maybe this one. And then after here, then here, knight to d3 check. That's an interesting plan. Let me check that with the computer. I mean, let me ponder that to myself without any computer assistance. So if you go there, it's saying best is to just take right here. What does it think of bishop to d2 here? It's saying that instead of going to d3 check, you could actually just ignore this and just develop your rook. Rook to e8, mm, I don't like rook e8 so much. Time is of the essence. We're looking to invade kind of faster. Pawn to e5, sort of an explosive nature to that one. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, again, I'm used to working with <laughs> with kids, and I've I've done this lesson here at Amazon like a few times, and I've just learned that you guys are not kids, and <laughs> you ask good questions. Let me think about that. So if you go if you go e5 here, what to say about that one? Still playable, but but not that good. You kind of go down by a pawn and a half in your advantage. Basically, if you go right here, you don't really get much of a chance to rip anything open after here takes and then here takes. Um, we're not really pressuring white that much. The answer here is um, to move this guy into here with the idea of going into uh, to d3. So someone was, was pretty close who said this earlier. Um, white's best move is not to go right here, but is to uh, capture like this. And then we have this nifty lateral queen move 
which is known to be like a hard move to see for whatever reason. Lateral queen moves are just generally difficult and a common source of like an oversight that leads to like a blunder. So after right here, now white's gonna go to, to g4. And um, through through a series of like small errors, white's now completely losing. Um, and, and it gives uh, black this chance to do like this awesome checkmate. So after right here, we're gonna, we're gonna ignore this attack for the moment and go knight to d3 check. And so we have this kind of vague, um, you know, array of pieces that are aiming towards the, the king, but it can all fall apart. Like after the king moves, if we just have to move our queen away, then the, the, uh, the queen takes the knight and we, we're losing all of a sudden. So he had to be very accurate while, while doing all this. Um, after this check here, um, the king has to move, and it goes to to g3, which allows for that that uh, beautiful queen stack here. It was it was better to go um, back like this to f1, but then black would still retain the advantage after going queen to b5. In the game, he goes right here, thinking for sure that black's going to have to move his queen, but he goes here instead. Which ah. So after right here, um, I would have prompted you guys with this, but I feel like I've mentioned queen sack so many times, I kind of gave it away. So we're going to go here, and then takes like this, knight takes, here check, and after doing this, uh, white resigns. So why does he resign? Well, let's see here. Let's look at all the squares. You can't go here or here, um, and then he's got this option or this option. He didn't even bother to play it. Mating net, Exactly. What about king to e3? Uh, what is that? King e3. So uh, back here, like this. Okay, if you go, if you go here, the bishop's got a couple ways to attack you. Um, it, we have like a mate right away or something. Can we go like this? Does this work? Here check. Can't take here. He's got to go here or here. Um, eh, if he goes there, then there's like this move. My tactics are rusty. Hold on a second. Um, let's see here. So if if king to e3, then we're gonna go we're gonna go um, not here check. We're gonna go like this, and then after here we go queen to e5 check, allowing this. Wow, that's crazy. So why do we think we allow this? What's the point of this now? We are down by two pieces. Great question. Good good critical thinking. Especially when the reputation is this hard to find. It's sort of like a little Easter egg that the, the author plants in there. If it's really obvious, then it's, it's not that intentional. I mean, it, they just were trying to be crisp. But this is more like just to see if you're paying attention. So a great question. You're very welcome for the explanation. So after king takes here, we have more than one way to, to win, but the most accurate way to go about it is knight to b4 check, and then after right here, this is a this is a slow burn. We're gonna go we're gonna go rook f to d8, still down by two pieces. Crazy. And this is what I mean. I've been teaching chess for ten years, and I've gotten over this game maybe a hundred times. I don't I don't know if someone's asked about that. Um, let's see here. So after right here, it is still not re yet resolved. After right here, then what's the finish? We go here, there, and then this goes over to d8. Quiet move there, f4, and then we're going to go queen to c5, check, king to b3. Pretty amazing that uh, the alkyne, you know, saw all this stuff, basically. And then we uh, move the, uh, the, the rook over, and we got checkmate in a couple moves from here. For the sake of momentum, I'm going to go ahead and return back to the game here and show you that nice little checkmate, and then we got two more games to look at. So after right here, there, there, we go like this, and then after uh, knight takes white resigns, the two options are either here or here. Um, and so if he goes to, to this square, we go knight to f2 checkmate. Nice little control over uh, these four squares here between the two knights. And then if he goes um, this way to, to g4, then we can play um, just just uh, pawn to h5 check, and all of a sudden these pawns are getting involved. You know, even even this one's involved in this checkmate. Um, so really, really pretty idea there. After here, it's checkmate this way. Then if instead he goes this way, we have this mate. What do you think? Is that a, a pretty checkmate there? You guys like that one? That was awesome. 
Good to hear. Good to hear. Like I said, these 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 games is what I do the best. You know, occasionally I like to show students my uh, my my tournament games, but I don't know. You got you got to sometimes as a teacher you got to go with what you feel enthusiastic about, and uh, that's what we're doing today. Okay, so this one here. Um, so White wins this one. Twenty-five move game. This is played in uh, eighteen ninety, and uh, it features the the Evans Gambit. I even know what the uh, the Evans Gambit is. <laughs> Great year. B4, B4, yep, yep. Oh, really? Does he? Interesting. All right, so bishop comes out like so, and then here, and then B4. And then since we've got an average group of 1,400, I'm not going to bother with the question about the, the point of this. I expect you guys probably understand it. We're going to go uh, C3. Um, interesting, we've seen this idea featured in all three games so far. Um, and then we're going to support D4. So this is this is st still considered like pretty good. It's it's um, just about like an equal position. So after right here, then C3, bishop comes back. We're going to go D4, takes, takes. And then uh, now the bishop goes here, and we get castled. So for the price of one pawn, we're now like fully developed. I don't think this is the most accurate way to, to play this for black. I feel like there was something better there, but... I don't know, maybe retreats or something? Am I missing something? I feel like it's not supposed to be this good for him. Black accepts is the most accurate. Because this looks like too good. Wait a second. Here, here. Um, D4. Okay. Yeah, he's supposed to go back to A5. That's what it was, yeah. So speaking of the king that's lost the right to, to castle... Um, he can use this pin here to his advantage. He can retreat this way, and then now, yeah, bishop a5, yeah. Now, instead of being able to capture this way since it's pinned, we don't get the chance to do that. Um, in which case, the, uh, the, the best reply, um, as shown by our openings database here, is to play d4, and after takes, now we just castle. Which seems kind of strange, because it's like, well, why did you play d4 at all, but... This is just this is just theory, but not here to talk about openings. We're here to talk about the uh, the main theme of just attacking the king. This lost the right to castle. So let's see how uh, Clemens does it. So after right here, we get this commanding lead right away. Uh, the opponent did not handle the uh, the gambit perfectly, and so that's allowed us to get a nice advantage. Here, here, d6. Knight comes out, and then bishop to d7, labeled with a question mark. Very similar to the, um, the move we saw earlier with that knight to a3, just kind of a uh, critical loss of tempo here, since if he instead had brought out the knight, then he can castle sooner. So after going um, right here to, to d7, then now we're going to go pawn to e5, and then we'll go like this. So then here it takes, and then do we take back, or do we go rook to e1? Bishop c3? A little confused by that. Your options are um, knight takes here, uh, pawn takes, or rook over. Or let's throw in this too, knight g5. Rook e1 seems more active, yep. You guys are on top of it. Rook to e1. I think bi bishop to c3 was to prevent castling. Um... So, so c3 is here, so there wasn't a bishop that, uh, that went here. a3. Oh, you're thinking about going bishop to, to a3 out here? Um, the thing is, if you, if you go there, I like the idea of, uh, of sticking with that theme of, like, attacking the, uh, the castled king, uh, uncastled king, but the knight can come in like this to e7, and then provide the king some, some coverage. So, um... Time is of the essence. We have sort of a small window of time to attack the king here before it gets castled. Here, here, and then now to keep the attack going, knight to g5. So this idea is kind of seen in the uh, the fried liver here too. Um, and so this this idea has to come with some some purpose to it because if black can just easily castle, then the knight ends up looking kind of just uh, sort of odd and out of place. Since if you take 
takes back, takes here. You trade away two very active pieces for a couple, you know, inactive like pawns and, and rooks. So when he plays this, the, does he expect uh, black to, to castle? And then if so, what's his plan? Nice one. Yep, you guys are on top of it. Queen to h5 is uh, is winning here. Um, I think. Hold on a second. So there's there's the uh, the original author, and then there's a translator here too, who talks about this. And so it looks like the original author does make an oversight. Um, so it's actually not winning. It seems like it is, um, but objectively this is still actually equal. And so Black made a mistake here and misjudged that and went right here. Okay, let's dig into it. So. What, what did the author miss, and what did the, uh, the opponent who's playing black miss? Okay, so if we go queen to h5, um, the original author says we're just winning the exchange and be up by a pawn. Um, and then the translator says not so. If you go right here, there is a defense afterwards. What is it? Part of being a good attacker is understanding the best way for your opponent to defend. Got a couple of votes for h6. Then we got a couple for bishop to f5. So we'll isolate the question a little bit. It's either here or here. One is really good and one is really bad. Rook e8, what are you doing? No comment. No comment about rook e8. I guess I did make a comment. You can't go there. You're going you're gonna to lose your rook. It's either here or here, which is better. Pawn to h6 or bishop to f5. So the answer here is bishop to f5. Um, you don't want to go h6 because if you go h6, then you can uh, you can go like this takes, and then after here, this is what the original author was talking about. That you win the exchange in a pawn, so you can just go like this, and then it's like resignable at that point. Um, so you got to go bishop to, uh, to f5 here, and one of the surprising points about why you want to do this is the queen can now take this pawn. Um, so after queen h5, uh, bishop f5, white may have no advantage. Uh, knight takes f7 surprisingly fails to queen takes d4 exclam, attacking both c4 and f2. Whoa, making a counterattack here. We got a serious counterattack there by, by black after that. Um, when the discovered checks do not help white. So discovered check here, we're lining up this guy. Seems like we'd have something here, but it turns out to be pretty benign. Um, and so therefore, white, if, if black had gone right here, should actually go for this. And then, so here, here, and then dx e5. Um, but then he says, even after this, uh, queen to d4, creating some counterplay, uh, makes things really unclear, uh, intending to follow up with queen to, to g4. And so um, that's kind of a key concept. Like when you're being attacked on one flank, um, usually the best counterattack is going to be in the center. And conversely, if you're being attacked in the center, the best counterattack is going to be on, on a certain flank. So to return to the game here, after that one error of going uh, h6, white's now got a, a crushing lead. So let's see how he wins convincingly here. Or it's, oh, let's see, he went uh, bishop to e6 here. Yeah. All right, so after this, uh, black gives up a pawn to get rid of the pressure on f7. Um, so um, it seems like it was logical, but it was a mistake. So we go here takes, pawn takes, knight takes, queen to d6, and now we go snag right here. And uh, we now the black king can't castle. We got a pawn, king to f8. Okay, cool. We get with this first phase of this was great. It was a success. What do we make of it now? What, what move should we follow up with? If we go bishop to h6, we'll be taken. And our magnificent attack will be no more. Lateral queen move. Yep. If we go queen to f3, our, our precious knight did all this hard work for nothing. And it'll be taken. Queen g4 is it. Yep. 
So we go right here. And this is kind of a quiet move. You know, it's it's a move that doesn't actually make any like direct threat yet. Um, maybe there's one. I'm not really seeing it just yet. But um, if you notice here, it's pretty hard to find these kinds of things. You know, we don't have a, an immediate threat that I can see right away, at least. There's, it's not a capture. Uh, it's not a check. Um, but this is an integral part of really becoming a successful attacker is being able to find these, these moves that just um, kind of, you know, get, get things set up, essentially. So after this, now uh, bishop takes here on, on d4. And so now we're going to go knight to e4, saying you can take the rook. Go for it. I'm going to take your queen. Queen goes, okay, well, I have none of that, and goes right here. Kapow. Whoa, attacking this rook and this one. And this one's going to come with checkmate. Holy moly. Well, uh, black's not going to have a chance to do that, because we're going to uh, send him a barrage of checks ourselves, beginning with this move here, uh, knight to e6 check, attacking the king. King goes here. Now we go knight to, uh, to f6. And knights and queens are really, like, known to work very well together uh, against the king, and we're seeing a great example of that right away. Uh, in this game and also in the last one too. So after here, king comes to uh, to f7, and this whole time uh, mate in one is, is being threatened. Um, after this, what should we do now? Queen to g7, allows right here, may or may not be good, what's your follow up? All right, I'm going to isolate the problem here a little bit. It's either here or knight here. And also, too, um, when you give it answers, I encourage you to sort of, like, show the full line, too. Like, try to give, you know, three moves or something. Knight g5, um, takes, yeah, it takes right here, queen to e6. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. Okay, so we're going to, that is the move. We're going to go here, knight to, uh, to g5 check, and uh, allow black to uh, take the knight if he so chooses, because we're going to get mate right away. So we go right here, and then he goes back. All right, if he instead were to take, now we go here check, and just between the, the bishop, the queen, and the knight, this is going to be enough to, uh, to score a checkmate here. Um, whenever you deliver a check, um, like horizontally or vertically to the king, then the squares available to the king, as long as the queen's protected, is to go a nice distance away. It's going to be either here or here. This one's not available because of the bishop, so he goes here. Now we do another lateral check this way, and then uh, this one's not available because his rook's there. And then if he goes here, now we're going to have a deadly discovered attack. It's going to be checkmate here soon. I'm going to um, I'm just going to keep going because I, I got more games to look at too. So he goes this way, putting up a, 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 a you know a good d defense here. After this, now we're going to play a move that was mentioned earlier at a seemingly really random time. Um, okay, this one's difficult. See if you can find this one. This may be the most difficult question I've asked you so far. Also, too, when you when you suggest um, move like knight to h6, clarify if it's knight f2 
to I mean yeah uh, uh, seven if it's knight f to h7 or knight g to uh, h7 yeah this one's pretty tricky I'd be I'd be impressed if someone can get this knight g to h7 so one vote for this one and it does keep the king in check this queen coming right here is threatened game over and we're still down by a pawn hey there we go someone said it yep yep bishop to a3 be a beautiful looking move here um and so now after this the the rook is defending this rook and <clears throat> although this one hasn't moved just yet um we're now seeing that like all of a sudden you know we have every single piece activated and, and involved in the game and so we're just a really commanding looking position here so now after this the queen's going to take like this and i'm uh, i'm glad you guys um you know when you followed up with a, a follow-up move queen to h5 not 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 sure about this one we're gonna go queen to e6 let me check if if that move would, would also work let's see here so if you go there that would also work it it, it delays mate by just one turn it's going to be mate in five here queen to h5 would be mate in six great suggestion all right so after right here now we're going to um see knight to uh to d8 and then after this we're going to do a nice little checkmate here see if you can find it same uh checkmating theme as in the uh the last one It's now actually uh, mate in two. Hey, got it. Yep, queen to f7. Seemingly hanging the queen, but nope. Here, checkmate. How about this one, huh? Pretty, right? The knights cover all these squares, and then these two knights block the uh, the exit squares too. Beautiful. Yep, that's how to see. Okay, we got one more game to look at. And uh, this one, um, <laughs> the player's name is actually Florian, um, which is kind of an um, interesting coincidence here. Um, okay, so White is going to win this game here. Let's see how they do it. Um, so Florian gets beaten. All right, here we go. So I'm going to speed through the opening here um, so we can get to the good stuff. Um, since I'm kind of running low on time. So here, here, uh, this opening here, it's called the, uh, the Grunfeld. Not, not very popular, I noticed. Um, interestingly, it, I feel like it's more common when I play late at night. Um, I feel like it just appeals more to, like, collectivistic cultures or something. That's my theory about it. There's, there's definitely some sort of trend of this. I, I see this more late at night. Um, so after right here, then there, uh, and then we go E4. This is called the, the classical variation. And um, in this position, um, I know this one pretty well because I play this line. There's actually a ton of moves. It, it's kind of hard to prepare against this because there's so many different things that black can do. There's like, here, let's look at it this way here. There's a6, knight to a6, bishop g4, knight c6, pawn c6. You know, there's all of these moves. It's, it's so unusual to have a position where there's like just so many possibilities to be prepared for. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of appealing. Um, and although it may seem at first glance like white's got a big advantage, it's just not really the case because black doesn't really have any big weaknesses and these pawns may turn out to be good targets. So, next here we're going to see knight to a6 and then, um, yeah, I guess while I th scroll through the opening, I'll leave the openings book up so you can have some, some context about the most common moves here. Um, Smyslaw, by the way, was, was the white player here and it was played in 1949. So now uh, pawn to, uh, to c5, and then after this, um, we're going to go like this. I'm just going to speed uh, to move 15. Here, here, castles, there takes, queen to a5, pawn a3, and then still pretty balanced at this point. Um, and then after right here, well, wait a second, this isn't, 
the king's already lost the right to castle. Oh, that's right. Okay. So it's interesting because this is like a variation on it. We just, we pull the king out of its castled position. Believe it or not, the, the king ends up on g5 in a moment. How on earth does that happen? Well, we're going to have to see. After right there, bishop comes here to h6, knight e4, takes, takes, and now what do we do? This is move 15. Uh, the game lasts until move 25. Spoiler alert. Didn't didn't catch that. King F5. I think you mean uh, capital N and then G5. Knight takes E4. I've been, I've been training with these kinds of positions. I've been doing uh, chess tempo tactics, and then I've been playing these kind of things out on an analysis board to like organize my thoughts. And I tell you what, these, these positions, they can take like 10 minutes. And I've been setting a time limit on myself too. I, I tend to be, one of my biggest weaknesses when I, when I play is that I'm kind of slow to calculate. Um, I may be a fast talker, but when it comes to calculating, I'm just kind of slow at it. And so I've been getting better at it by um, just playing these kind of things out on an analysis board with, with chess tempo. If you're closer to like 1500 or so and you use chess.com, you might want to switch to chess tempo. I, might, I bet you might like it. Knight takes e4 doesn't seem to be right. So yeah, the purpose of my comment there was to, to share that these things can take up to 10 minutes. We have like one minute for you guys to solve it, so... Understandably, no one has the answer yet. Here it is, knight to g5. Uh, white offers a piece in order to keep the tempo of the attack. Um, black should have now played knight takes g5, for after queen takes g5, his position would have been only slightly inferior. Instead, he became greedy and replied knight takes c3. Queen takes h7 check now, and then king here, and now we go and we take right here. So now, we are down by a piece, but the king is now on g5. Hmm. What do we do now? By the way, this is a uh, question mark move. Um, it's actually not the best to go right here. The most effective plan would have been to take the uh, the bishop. Holy moly. Screen frozen? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, my screen froze. Is it good? Oh, okay, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm going to try to get like a direct Ethernet cord. I've actually got like 500 megabits per second when the Wi-Fi works. Can I go back a few moves? Yes, I absolutely can. Again, great uh, participation today. You guys are fantastic with us. So, um, we paused kind of around this point here. And then I was saying that, um, understandably, no one got the full answer. It's just a difficult position. There's just so much going on. Um, it's going to be knight to, uh, to g5, which is pretty risky, you know, unless you really know what you're doing, like Smyslav here. Um, because after it takes, there's potential to, like, take the, uh, the bishop, too. So, after here, and then I have another lesson at 6, so i got to get going here pretty soon. Here takes, and then um, there, and then now king takes g5. So this is a mistake. It would have been better instead to, um, to play uh, rook takes e2. You're very welcome. See you later. Um, so then after here takes, now we're going to go queen to g7. Another quiet move, similar to what we saw earlier with like that queen to g4 move that covered the knight. So after right here, rook to e4. And then now we're going to go pawn to f4 check. Um, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, so I'll, I'll go for like two more minutes. But I hope you guys had fun today. Um, also, I'd love it if you guys um, could could uh, answer this, this uh, questionnaire. I'm really trying to hit the ground running with that and uh, kind of expand my audience. And I'd appreciate you guys' uh, insights on, on what, what you guys like. So after right here, pawn to f4 check. Rook comes over here to, uh, to f4. Now we're going to take it. 
King walks all the way up here to F4. We go rook to F uh, to F1 check. And sure, this is a uh, this is a nice you know attack that's sort of brewing here. We have the bishop, these pawns, um, the rook. But unless it surmounts to something uh, you know concrete, we're going to lose in the end game because we're down by uh, some material here. King now walks all the way up here to to E3. What do we do now? Queen to e5 is it. Here check. King to d2. He says, uh, well, he may run, but mate is not far off. How about now? What do we do here? I bet there's more than one answer. Couple votes for rook to d1. That one still wins, but it's not the best. Um, I guess after uh, king to c2, um, you're just not gonna be able to force mate. Although it looks like he has to get up some heavy material because you end up ahead by five points. Adequate, but not the best. Queen to f4. Also not mention the top three. I wonder why. If you go there, it's mating 13, so it still works, it's just not as fast, I suppose. Um, I don't know, I feel like the queen's in a pretty good spot. <laughs> Mate 13, easy, yeah. I had a puzzle like that the other day. There was this line where I was supposed to see, and it was like, mating 10. And I was just like, what? How was I supposed to see that? Bishop to c4. Another quiet move. Ooh, someone just found it. Yeah, bishop to c4. So this is um, the most accurate way to do it. Oh, actually, no, it's not. He actually, two, it, he can get mate two moves faster if he'd gone rook to f2. But we're kind of splitting hairs at that point. After this, now we're going to go, um, uh, takes right there. And then we go rook to f2, check. And he resigns since mate comes in a couple more moves. That's going to do it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Play lots of chess. And uh, I'll see you guys in a month. You're very welcome.